You know, it seems like everywhere you go these days, people are talking about PostgreSQL or as the kids say, PostgreS. And can you blame them? It's open source, it's lightweight, it's relational, it's object oriented, and it's exceptionally easy to use. And if you give me just a few minutes of your time, I'm going to show you how to install PostgreSQL. And I'm also going to show you how to bring up the administrative console, create databases, create tables, and even issue some SQL statements against that Postgres database just to make sure that everything is working. But installing Postgres is the first thing that we've got to do. And that is what we're going to do next. You know, downloading and installing PostgreSQL is as easy or as hard as you want to make it. And I want to make it easy. The easiest way to do it, just head over to postgresql.org slash downloads, click on Windows. When you get there, you'll see a little message that says the installer for Windows is provided by EDB. And if you got any problems with the installer, send it to them, not to Postgres. I'm just fine with that. I don't anticipate any problems. So you click the link. That'll take you right over here. And I'm just going to click on the installer for Windows x86. I like doing development on Windows. No shame there. Now, you get this file that downloads. Looks like it's 370 megs in size. So it's not tiny, but this is going to come with a, a bunch of tools, including the administrative console for work for working with Postgres. So really, it uh, isn't that bad a deal. Double click the installer kicks up and you can actually just accept all of the defaults when this comes up. So I'm going to say install Postgres. Yes. Do I want to put it into that standard folder? Sorry, I can't do it. I just can't do it. I hate program files. I have a folder on my file system called tools where I put things just sometimes I'm writing scripts or something like that. And that space in program files causes a problem, but you could accept the defaults just I'm a little persnickety when it comes to that. It says, what do you want to install? The Postgres server, PG admin for administering, stack builder, some command line tools. That is perfect. That is all that I need. Ask for the data directory where it's going to store all the files as it creates resources. Ask for a password. I'm just going to put in password and it's kind enough not to bark at me. And the port number that this is going to run on, I think this is cute, 5432, no one, no zero, but you can accept that. I'm going to accept the default locale, but if you want to select Africanus for South Africa or Albanian, go right ahead. I'm going to click next and this is going to install and this is just going to take a minute. Okay, that took a few minutes to install on my third generation Intel machine, um, but uh, all things being equal, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to deselect this uh, launch stack builder at exit and click finish. I'm gonna allow the tool to install and then I'm gonna come over here and take a look and see if I can bring up the administrative console for PostgreSQL. Now, by the way, people often see this menu and they're like, holy smokes, how old is uh, your Windows installation? And that's actually just a, a special tool in their start menu that makes it look older. But I'm gonna open up PG admin. Boy, I hope I can remember what my password was. So it's gonna start up here, the PG admin management tool. And it looks, like we're in. I'm going to come over here and open up the servers and boom, it's going to ask for the password. Hope that I can remember this. Just a quick diversion. If you're enjoying this tutorial at all, if you could like, subscribe, even comment, my videos don't get a lot of attention on YouTube. So even a little bit of interaction goes a long way in waking up the algorithm. Also, I was going to ask you if you could sign up for my newsletter. There's a link in the description. I got a new version of Hibernate Made Easy coming out and I'm going to be giving away copies to randomly selected winners who subscribe to my newsletter. Also be giving away free chapters as well. And also, I helped do some final edits on Darcy DeClute Scrum Master Certification Guide. So if you're agile and working with Scrum, and you want to get Scrum Master or Product Owner certified, a lot of people have been using this book to score 100%. So again, it's available on Amazon. There's a link in the description. Okay, now let's get back to our coding. 
though I often do a little tutorial on creating a to-do list in Python or JavaScript or Java or React. And a lot of times that requires a to-do database. So what I'm going to do is create a to-do database here. I've already got Postgres. I'm going to right click on databases and say, let's create a database called to-do. And in this database, I need a table called tasks. And I, I think I'll create that table. There's a few ways you can actually go in and create these tables. You can go in and create tables right here. But I think the cooler way to do that is to just actually run some SQLs. So I'm going to open up the query tool, maximize the screen. And over here under the query, I'm going to try and run a create query. So create table if it doesn't exist called task. I think they might lowercase that on me. I know Postgres likes the lower. Um, ID serial primary key, name varchar, completed is a Boolean value. So the name of the task and whether it was completed or not will be thrown in there. I'll click play. It says that it was created, but I don't see anything down here. Boom, all of a sudden we have tasks created. Okay, well, I guess if we've got a table called tasks, it behooves us actually throw something in there. So let's do a couple of insert statements. So um, what do we have to do? Well, we have to like this video. Um, we have to learn Mojo. We have to subscribe to my channel, Blatant Plugs, and uh, maybe learn Python as well. So I'm going to throw those into the query editor, the query window, click play. It says that the inserts happen. It says insert zero one. What does that mean? Does that mean that only one of those records went in? I don't think so. So select star from task and boom, like learn Mojo, subscribe and learn Python. And how did learn Python get in there? We want to actually learn Java, right? So maybe I should just update that record. We're going through the whole set of CRUD operations here, update task, set name equal learn Java, we'll throw an exclamation mark on there too. Let's have a little energy. Completed is true, uh, I guess. And uh, the ID is for, well, why don't I make that false, right? Okay, so let's do that. Click play. It says that it was updated, but again, I'm from Missouri. I want to see, show me whether it was, and there we go, learn Java. I don't know what's left in CRUD. We did the create, we did the read, we did the update. Oh, we've got to do the delete. I'm not deleting the learn Java. I'm going to assume that you've already subscribed. So we'll delete number three. There we go again. You know where I'm from. I'm from St. Louis. I'm from Missouri. I'm from the show me state. Select star from task. And all of a sudden it now says, that record with the primary key of three is gone. So there you go. Couldn't be easier to install. Couldn't be easier to use. Just got to know a little bit of SQL and the whole world of PostgreSQL is at your fingertips. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, um, why don't I just say, why don't you just subscribe over on YouTube, give the channel a like, leave some comments. And I do have a number of tutorials on connecting to PostgreSQL from Python, Spring Boot, React, Angular, JavaScript, Mojo, you name it. So head on over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there, and you'll find lots of great tutorials on database programming with Postgres.